the greatest day is when I open up my email and I get some arbitrary email from someone who I don't know and maybe they ping me on LinkedIn or you know they send me an email and it's hey Keith I just want to let you know I've read your book or I've read your blogs and um, I know you don't know me but I just wanted to reach out and let you know about the impact that you and your work has had on my life and that absolutely makes my day that is the greatest payment I could ever ask for so when I hear that that's what keeps me going that because sometimes you don't hear that as a matter of fact I was speaking to a company the other day and they say hey Keith you know we, we love your work we want to bring you in to work with our sales team and and really help transform our managers into world-class coaches oh and by the way we've used coaching salespeople to sales champions we're using on your day and we're using sales leadership for our entire curriculum and I'm thinking well, that's nice to know and that's great news I don't I don't always get to hear that and to me that's why I will always respond to anyone who sends me any type of link asking me a question how I can help coach them how they can deal with the situation yeah granted it takes me more time but you know this is my job to seek to serve I attacked my network I went out and I found every person that I knew that was extremely successful at you know uh, SMB SaaS healthcare businesses um, who were doing literally exactly what I wanted them to do and I went out and I hunted those people down and I was ruthlessly efficient at doing it and finding every person in my network that I knew was good early on like big secret for me when you're when you're building a business early on like you cannot afford to take chances on salespeople like if you are like, yeah, this person's a six out of 10, seven out of 10, and you make that your first, second, third sales hire, you're, you're doing yourself an incredible disservice. Like your first sales hire, you should either be confident is a 10 out of 10, you should fail fast if they're not, right? Or you should hit your network and say like, I'm gonna get Greg, I'm gonna get Jim, because those guys are monsters, right? And like, I know putting them in these position, we're, go we're gonna succeed. And then as you do that, like as you go from one to five, you're not gonna be able to hire those types of people anymore. Your network runs thin, right? You st suddenly start to realize you don't know as many like top 1% salespeople as you think you do when you start right. to come through your network. And so you have to be really, really efficient early on at identifying why are those people really good at this particular job, right? And I know there's like, you create an ideal candidate profile, right? And for me, like a huge secret was, I figured out all the personality traits those folks had. I figured out all the soft skills and hard skills they had. I gave each of them a weighting, right? One to 10, how important were those things? I graded every candidate the same way by asking them the same questions, putting them through the same role play scenarios and grading them the exact same way. And at the end, the grade would often indicate Am I making good hire? And if I started to notice over time- And let's repeat those three, because that's huge. Everyone's yeah. trying to like hire the best of the best, whether yeah. it's SDRs, E's. So, so what were those three just quickly again? Yeah, so I was usually just like hard skills, soft skills, and personality traits. So like, um, you know, uh, I'm just trying to think of a, a really good example uh, up front. Like one would be um, like, what's your sales process, right? Walk me through your sales methodology. And I don't, don't want to just hear like, I work hard, I work smart, like, you know, here's your quota back, back out of that, right? Like help me understand how you might back out of that and then how you might schedule your day, week, month, year in order to hit that goal. Um, you know, you can talk about softer things like, you know, um, how do you handle confrontation? How do you handle, you know, a pause in the buying cycle? Like give me examples. Thank you for that one example. Everyone has one. Give me another. Thank you yeah. for that two. Very few people have two. Give me a third. Thank you for that third very few people have three, right? So like really peeling the onion back on understanding whether or not someone's really good at interviewing or really good at selling. And so I had hard skills, soft skills, personality traits, and that weighting one to 10, like one, it's not that important in this, in this role, 10, it's hyper important in this role. And then I would grade them, multiply them out and get a final score, right? Over time, as I noticed shifts, as we became a larger company, I could move those weightings up and down. Maybe having yep. perfect process uh, became more important. Maybe working hard became less important. And by adjusting those weightings, I was able to adjust my ideal candidate profile, but never come out of a room and say, what do you guys think? Yeah, we liked her, we liked him. Like that's not the way to hire. Like you have to have a rigid process. A lot of people, I, I think like sales or like doing content is, is very 
much like starting in sales. How many views did you get on your your first show? Um, probably about seven. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I think I think I was at seven or fourteen. My first YouTube video I did. It's bad. I mean, it's it's so bad. I I haven't watched your first show. It was something that I wanted to do. Um, how is it looking back now till then? Like the difference. It's pretty bad. Um, but so it's pretty bad, but it's still useful. So the whole premise of the podcast is that I'm not a, an expert. I'm a salesperson, just like the audience. So I'm asking the stupid, dumb questions. I'm happy to look like an idiot in front of the guest to pull out information that they might just gloss over, or they might use a, an acronym. They might use some kind of uh, jargon that the audience will go, "What the hell does that mean?" And I'll, I'll stop them and ask what it means. So the show hasn't really changed all that much, other than I've got better at speaking less fast adding more pauses and just the, the sound quality of things more so than the con the cult the content itself so the content is literally me just saying i don't understand what you're talking about please because if i don't understand it after 500 interviews 600 interviews the audience are very unlikely to understand it either so that's the the premise of the show and that's uh, one of the reasons why i did catch a little bit at the beginning because no one else is doing that it was always two sales gurus you know, sat opposite to each other, kind of the battle of the minds and trying to show each other up. Whereas right. I, I'm, I'm actually right. like- that's, that's how they all are, right? You know, timing is is everything and being in the right place at the right time can, you know, can, can double your, your sales performance um, or it can cut it in half if it's not the right time. And, you know, we ended up finding ourselves in market with, um, you know, I think some very compelling solutions, but the timing didn't end up being right uh, because actually going back to my BlackBerry story, those agencies were at a time when they were, they were no longer spending on Blackberries because they weren't sure what was happening there, but they hadn't yet approved iPhones and Android devices for use. BYOB or whatever. Yeah, BYOD. BYOD, yeah. right? And so, uh, so and, and they were dependent on Apple and Google to do things. So we had this like, you know, 18 month period where everything was just stalling because they couldn't move forward. And it was, it was very frustrating as an organization, but again, you appreciate in hindsight how important, you know, right time in the right markets uh, with the right product is, whether you're a product or a marketer or a seller. And, you know, one of the things we did was we actually reoriented a number of our sellers to other markets outside of government, to financial services, to healthcare, to other regulated industries. Um, and some of them ended up being more successful there because they could move deals faster. Um, Got it. You like right. diversified and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think, it, I think the secret to the growth or any success I've had here, Brandon, I mean, it's one part, uh, it's one part hard work. Uh, you know, people that approach me and go, hey, I'd love to do exactly what you do. And I, th I think I have the best job on the planet, bar none, because number one, I get to sell every day. Uh, and But then number two, so I'm a practitioner, right? It's not like, hey, I read a book on selling and I'm going to teach you. I still eat what I kill. Uh, so so I still love that part of the job. Day. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, and, I love that. and what's great about my job is then I have to go out and teach salespeople. So there's um, there's a huge amount of accountability Right. So if I show up at your organization tomorrow and I'm like, man, you guys got to hit the phones, you got to be targeting, you got to be prospecting. And if I haven't been doing that, it really causes some uh, internal pressures inside me. So it's, you know, it's like being if, if you wanted to be fit and you were a yoga instructor, that, that that's a great synergy. Right. It's like, OK, I want to be a great salesperson and you have to be a great salesperson if you're going to teach other great salespeople how to get better. So I think it's 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 hard work. Um and to your point, when it's good, it's great. And when it's bad, it's awful. And you just got to understand that's, that's the ride we've chosen. We are on the roller coaster. You know, we're not on, we're, you know, we're not on the merry-go-round. We are on the roller coaster. So there's going to be highs and lows. Uh, you know, there's some, some just stupid luck being in the right place at the right time. Um, oh, yeah. and, you know, I just, I've been, I was just, I've just been doing this for a long time. And, and I interrupted you. So you said that the sales secret was, hard work and then you were about to get into probably the second half of that like or you were combining a few things i said i think i'm, I'm just kind of riffing on you here just kind of I, you know i wouldn't say that's my sales secret as much as that's probably been the secret to the success of this of this organization of this firm yeah. it's just you know the hard work understanding there's going to be highs and lows um some dumb luck um uh, being committed to a process and then making sure that everything you do you do uh, with excellence, which is easy to talk about and really hard to do. And and I don't do excellence each and every day, 
But, but what's the old saying? I love going the extra mile because there's just not much traffic there. And so every day I'm trying to challenge my, I've never every day I'm that trying to challenge my, oh man, it's a great, it's, yeah, it's got it on a plaque on my wall. So every day I'm trying to challenge myself, what can I, what can I do that's differently that's going to leave an impression on either my customers or my prospects to get them to say, wow, this, this is, I love working with this guy. And that's, you know, I mean, that, but that's no secret. I think that's what all of us do to some level. 